Okay. I think we're good to start. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, for attending today's webinar on Kinetically. Uh, welcome to the webinar. This is a proven and patented process. Uh, we're excited about it. It's the safer, faster way to deep clean Hersig fin tubes. We're excited to bring this technology to the market and explain it to you today. This is Groom's ninth webinar in the series where we discuss all things power gen and refinery related. This is by far one of the most anticipated topics yet um, with over 80 facilities represented live on this webinar today. We appreciate all of your attention and uh, interest in this topic. A little bit on the webinar structure for today. We're going to review the company experience in the space, which is very important as it is a unique process. Um, safety and how our history, um, logistics and how kinetic clean project happens and how it comes together, effectiveness and what you should expect from the kinetic clean process at your plant. And everyone's favorite part is case studies exploring what some other plants have seen from recent cleanings, um, including back pressure, megawatt, debris removed, heat transfer, and much more. Uh, this is about a 30 minute presentation. We're gonna leave plenty of time for Q&A afterwards. So please type in the Q&A section, any questions that you might have. We'll make sure to address them after the main presentation. This presentation is being recorded and a link will be sent to everybody um, who's registered once complete. Kinetic Clean is able to happen and we're able to bring it to you today due to Groom's recent acquisition of Expro. Expro is an explosive professional company with locations in Texas, Kentucky, and Missouri. The Groom and Expro teams combined enable Groom to bring Kinetic Clean and other offerings that are innovative to, to other markets and Expro to bring a full suite of industrial service offerings from Groom to their customers. We're very excited about this partnership. <clears throat> Little time to touch on some experience here. Kinetically it might be new to you, a new name to the space, but the Kinetic Clean team is not new to cleaning tubes. Established over 25 years ago, the team has 166 years of combined experience. Now, the only way to stick around this long in the industry is to do three things. Deliver great results with innovative services. Jeff's going to touch on that. Uh, delivering an ROI that's better than the alternative methods. And lastly, doing all these things safely by tenure and trained professionals. Quick intro on our speakers. Uh, Jeff Baus is Groom's president and CEO. He's been an innovator in the power general refinery space for many years. Many of you are on this call because he solved problems for you in the past. And the rest of you are probably on this call looking to see if he can solve some problems for you. So thank you very much for joining us on the presentation here today, Jeff. My name is Steve Houghton. I'm the VP of sales at Groom. Uh, in charge of the sales responsibilities on HERSIG, refinery, industrial cleaning, and coating divisions. Now I have the honor and pleasure of introducing Expro's leaders, uh, Brad McGinnis and Rod Hall. Um, they are with us today um, on the webinar. It'll be around afterwards for Q&A. Brad McGinnis is Groom's new COO and former CEO of Expro. He's a wealth of knowledge with four decades of leadership experience in both industrial and explosive cleaning. Rod Hall is a co-founder of Expro and now VP of sales uh, with Groom. Rod's done it all from being a plant chemist all the way to being senior executive with the premier explosive cleaning company in the space. Welcome to the team guys. We're uh, happy to have you. Now, a lot of folks' first question they ask is, 
you know, where you're located. This gives a great uh, illustration of our headquarters in New Jersey and um, other service locations between Kentucky, Texas, Missouri, and California. All these locations spread out strategically um, throughout the country, enable quick mobilization and support for emergency and planned jobs. The other more important question uh, that I guess off, get asked often is where do we work? Uh, Groom employs its full suite of services in every state throughout the power gen and refining space. With that said, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff to talk about the kinetic cleaning process a little bit more in detail. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks, everybody, for their time. I'm sure that uh, folks are webinared out at this point a year and a half, uh, roughly after the start of COVID here. So uh, I appreciate everybody getting on the time, I, uh, getting on here and taking the time. Uh, I also see a lot of familiar names that, uh, that, that in the power gen space and refinery space, a bunch of guys I've known for a really long time. So uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, you know, we made the acquisition of XPro here about uh, a little over two months ago. Been working on it for a while here. Um, and I think it's really an opportunity to bring a much needed technology uh, into the gas turbine, petrochem refinery space, uh, dealing with fin two bundles and things like that. Um, I'm excited to bring it to you. Um, I've been working really closely with Brad and Rod over the last, uh, I don't know, 16, 18 months now, and uh, certainly excited about the opportunity and uh, welcome those guys aboard. Um, so, you know, I, I think what's interesting about this technology is you know, we've looked at things in this space here that have been tried for many, many years, and we've done them, right? Dry ice blasting. Uh, some guys have tried water, uh, chemical cleaning, uh, vibration, uh, you know, and I've seen some other technologies come in recent years uh, that we had an opportunity to bring to market that we didn't because I didn't feel like it was the, the best product and, and really solved the most problem for, for the customer. Um, and when I got wind of this uh, about 22 months ago, uh, I, I sort of hopped all over it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, it solves a lot of problems for everybody here on this call. Um, it's proven, it's uh, super safe, and it's the most effective way to clean fin tube bundles and HRS Um, You know, I, I've been through the numbers, looked at it many times. So if we just kind of roll through the presentation here, I'll, I'll go into it and hopefully explain it to you. Um, you know, basically what it is, it's, it's all patented, right? We patented the, the technology itself, uh, the explosives work within the HRSG, and then also patented the, the high volume air delivery system uh, that, that follows up the, the initial kinetic ex explosive cleaning. Um, and it's, it's, it's a shockwave, right? That's what we're doing. We're sending a shockwave through your tube bundle uh, to most effectively clean it. Um, to me, what's super, fantastic about about the offering is that it's it's a full coverage of your tube bundle um you know it's the full width and the full height of your tube bundle you know it's not a selective explosive process that ends up looking like a like a spotted animal uh when it's done you know uh all the tube is all the tubes are uniformly cleaned uh throughout the entire bundle um and, and also we solved the opacity problem, right? So a lot of guys have tried some sort of kinetic energy to clean the tubes and, you know, they start back up and they've got opacity problems or just a rust plume that leaves the stack and lands on cars and all sorts of things I've seen and heard over the last couple of years. Um, you know, when we go to finish it up with, with the air cleaning, you know, we get about 50% more waste uh, following the air cleaning uh, than we, if we didn't use an air cleaning process at all. Uh, and we'll go through all that here. Uh, the other problem I think it solves is it doesn't, it doesn't stress the welds uh, on, on the tubes. Uh, there's no tube spreading. There's no tube movement involved uh, in trying to get access in deeper into the lanes, et cetera, et cetera. It's all done through the kinetic energy that we deliver. Um, the other thing that I love, right? I mean, we're all super hyper-focused on eh and S um and exposure and man hours and all of those things right and uh what i love about it is there's no scaffolding um other than if you know there's a couple of herstigs and plants i've been to where there's scaffolding needed to uh to gain access to the confined space and obviously you know we need to get our men in there so we'd have to scaffold up to that point but inside the duct work itself 
is no scaffolding required whatsoever. Uh, no sky climbers are used, uh, no, no stick staging, uh, nothing. It's, it, it's reduced all that. And, and listen, I'm, I'm a guy, you know, we, we do a lot of scaffolding here, right? So, uh, you know, I, I would say about 33 to 40% of our man hours in, in the HRSG and petrochem refinery space is probably spent on scaffolding uh, for access to do our cleaning. Um, and this cleaning requires no scaffolding, which I just think is, is fantastic. Um, the other thing that's, that's super excellent to me is that while it, all the work is going on, while we're, we're setting the debt cord and doing all the stringing and preparation of everything else, all the other work inside the HRSG can continue as normal. Uh, you know, we can set our blast to go off at shift change or lunch, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for about an hour inside the space. And we don't have to stop all the other work and extend your outage. You know, we can finish on time and on budget. Uh, within your outage window without negatively affecting all the other work that needs to go on inside the space. Um, you know, it's really, to me, it's about solving problems, right? That's, that's how I've gotten to where I am today. That's how we've gotten to where we are today at Groom. Um, and, and this really, I think, solves just about every problem that guys have when it comes to, you know, cleaning the back ends uh, of the FIN2 bundles and HRSGs and Petrochem refinery plants. Um, all the explosives are, are set up, constructed, initiated by trained and licensed explosives professionals um, that have been doing it for many, many, many years. Um, and the other thing also is there's no additional moisture being added into your ductwork. You know, um, dry ice has condensation issues and all sorts of other things. We all know about water and, and sort of the acid base situation with regards to uh, how basic uh, the pH is on ammonia salts, and then you add water to them, and then you've got to counteract that with an acid solution and neutralize it and everything else, right? Like, no matter what you've tried to do or look at in the past, I've looked at it all on, on many different ways. You know, it, it's all, it all creates a problem, right? Um, and this is one of those things that I, I think is just so innovative. Uh, I'm really excited about it. So uh, I'll take a look at some, some additional slides here. Um, you know, listen, it's safer. Uh, manpower wise, man hour wise, uh, you know, it's an exact science, right? Um, I've looked at some of the other technologies out there and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, mixing gases and, and is it the right mixture, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we're dealing with an engineered material of debt cord uh, that is certainly, uh, you know, safer than, than some of the other kinetic energies that I've seen on the market. Uh, certainly faster. Um, you know, we can rig, uh, we can rig a space, uh, inside in probably about two, two and a half hours max uh, to get ready to, to set a charge. Um, so it's, it's certainly faster and that charge will be full width and full height of that two bundle. Um, so it's, it's very, very fast in, in the way it works. Um, and it's the deepest clean, uh, the way we, we string the charges, the way that kinetic energy is placed through the tubes. Um, it, it certainly offers the deepest cleaning of any of the bundles that I've ever seen. Uh, and then to follow it up with the automated air system, um, it really just sort of knocks it out of the park and, and really finishes the rest of the project off um, to make it be a success. So um, let me go to the next slide here. Um, you know, but let's, let's face it, right? We're talking about explosives. Um, and, and I don't think you can talk about that and have that conversation with you guys at the plant without talking about, about the safety and training involved in what it takes, right? Um, so we conduct uh, lots and lots of OSHA-based safety training programs. All of our all of our people are OSHA 30 trained uh, for all the all the work. Uh, Pre-job tailgate safety meetings are documented and happen at the start of every shift and every shift change. Uh, corporate safety director and job site inspections and monitoring are ongoing uh, throughout the entire process. Uh, we also do quantitative testing on all our training to make sure it's you know understood and comprehended and not just you know, taught, right? They're not just listening, they're comprehending what's going on. Uh, obviously we handle pre-employment and random drug screening uh, per your guys' requirements for ATF guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. But I think really that the safety record of, of X-Pro speaks for itself, um, you know, and it's, it's zeros across the board, right? Um, you know, over a hundred thousand man hours worked year over year over year uh, for the last five years with, with no recordables. Uh, no restricted loss time, no fatalities, no incident rates. I mean, nothing. It's zeros across the board. Um, you know, these guys have, you know, we, I, I say these guys, I, sh I should say we, right? I mean, it's, 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 
you know, it's, 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 it's together with us now. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, they, they just show their tenure that they, they show their experience and they have the most fantastic reputation of any deslagging company, explosive deslagging company in, in the world. Um, and, and their customer base is there to prove it. Um, so next, um, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you know, a, a piece of a piece of detonation cord is is completely safe to handle and and is completely inactive until the point that you add a charge to it. Um, so you know, while we're in there, we're basically stringing up debt cord with what looks like a you know a, a giant industrial grade uh, clothes hanger basically from your closet uh, that's hung off of cabling uh, through your sky climber ports and the roof of your ductwork. Um, and that cord is run in loops up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and then it's lifted in place. And then we basically go in and tie that cord down uh, to the bottom uh, near the floor. Uh, so it doesn't have any movement. There's no slapping or anything like that when the detonation is occurring. And it keeps it in, in a safe arrangement, uh, you know, spaced out between the tubes. Nothing comes in contact with the tubes in any way, shape or form. Uh, but it allows for no scaffolding, which we've talked about. I, I can't, I, the pros of that alone are, are just spectacular in my opinion. Um, but the nice thing about while we're stringing all those charges of debt cord until a charge is introduced, you know, it's completely inactive. So, so all of our folks and all the other folks inside the space, you've got some gas turbine work going on. You've got some other tube repairs. You've got inspections going on, catalyst work going on, whatever the case may be. All of the, uh, the other work can go on until until the time to until the time to actually set the charge occurs, right? Until we actually put a charge to the detonation cord, and we can do all that. You know, we can go in there if we're cleaning the last three banks of tubes, and we're going to set charges on six spaces. We can work all shift and set set we and set all six of those charges, and not attach the charge uh, to it until shift change. So all the other work can go on inside the unit. And then in shift change, we can pull everybody out 30 minutes early, clear the space, make sure everybody's clear the cordoned area, give everybody the warning, and then apply the charge and, and set everything off. And then 30 minutes later, everybody can go back to work after shift change and go back inside the unit and continue their work, right? So, I mean, let's face it, time value of money and also, you know, time value of the outage, you know, um, it's about getting that outage done, especially in this day and age, as quick as possible. So that's something this allows you to do, you know, very, very efficiently. So what's a crew, what's a crew look like, right? Like, well, what is, what is the typical work scope on something like this look like? It's, it's seven, it's a seven man crew. You know, we've got a project manager we're working on the project with. We've got a working foreman supervisor on the project, a heavy equipment operator for the compressor, uh, for the vac truck, et cetera. And then four technicians that are actually setting the charges. Um, there's a minimum of one licensed blaster per crew. That's based on state requirements. Um, we haven't done a job yet where there's not at least two licensed blast members on the crew. Um, that's just SOP for us. Um, but that's what a typical crew looks like. And, and we can work around the clock, right? Day shift, night shift, uh, sort of whatever it takes to get the job done. That's what we've always done. That's what we'll always continue to do. Um, you know, benefits, right? There's, there's lots of benefits. I, I, I think... I think for the most part, everybody understands what the benefits are, but let's just run through them just for the heck of it. You know, we want to increase the heat, heat rate absorption of your tubes, right? We, we you know, the, the more fouling material you have on, the less steam you're going to produce, right, uh, within your bundles. Uh, so it's less steam to, you know, the cogen to the steam host, right? Uh, maybe it's a refinery next door, a petrochem facility, you know, a manufacturing facility that, that's your steam host, right, if you're a cogen. Uh, for those combined cycle guys with steam turbines, right? The more steam, the more, the faster you're going to spin that steamer, the more electricity you're going to produce. So the name of the game is to increase that heat absorption rate of your tubes. And that's what, that's what cleaning the tubes is, you know, one of the main benefits of cleaning those tubes is. Uh, next we have, um, you know, inc you know, decrease your, your back pressure, right? Which is just an increase in megawatts at the end of the day. You know, yeah, it, it, it certainly increases your, you know, your steam for your turbine or your steam host, like we just talked about, but it also increases your megawatt, right? I mean, here's a graph on the right, uh, standard 7F, I believe, uh, is what this is based off of. It might be a 501F, I forget what this graph is for. But basically, you know, you want to increase your power, we got to increase that exhaust, that exhaust flow, and any sort of back pressure on your gas turbine is going to, is going to decrease that. 
so the really, to me, the biggest benefit to cleaning your tubes is, is you know, improve your, your, D, your DP, right? If we can remove three, four, five, six inches of back pressure off your tubes, I'm telling you, I've been ice blasting tubes for 15 years, uh, maybe longer. Um, and uh, I don't want to date myself, but at least 15 years. And I've never seen three, four, five, six inches of back pressure gain from, from, a, from a dry ice blasting. Um, you know, and, uh, and here we are offering that, you know, on a pretty standard basis. Um, it's pretty spectacular to be able to offer back pressure gains like that to you guys, I think is, uh, is spectacular. So, uh, next, you know, we want to lower your flue gas temps, right? We don't, we don't want that heat leaving the stack. Um, you know, we, we want that heat to, to transfer itself to the tube. So we definitely want to lower those flue gas temperatures as they, as they lower your stack temperatures. Uh, is really the name of the game as well here. It's another benefit of, of keeping your tubes clean. You know, and overall improve the BTU efficiency of your HRSIG, right? I mean, that's, uh, I think that kind of goes without saying. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. All right. So, uh, you know, also I would tell you it's, uh, it's a complete turnkey offering, right? It's not just going in there and applying kinetic energy, right? We talked about the kinetic energy piece um, and the air cleaning piece a little bit here. But then at the end of the day, we bring in our own vac trucks, our own, our own crew there on site operates and, and runs the vac truck. And we bring vac boxes on site and dumpsters and we'll clean out the whole space for you and handle disposal for the plant. Uh, we'll make sure that the waste gets T-clipped, properly classified and properly sent to the right landfill. And all, all chain of custody paperwork is provided to the plant to make sure that they can keep that on their files. And I'll work with their eh &S folks to make sure that happens. But it's, it's streamlined for the plant, right? It's one nectar ring for the whole process, from the kinetic energy to the air cleaning to the waste disposal, vacuuming everything. You know, it, it just makes it super easy for you guys. So, you guys, you know, you guys already have enough contractors on site, right? I mean, let's face it, in this day and age in power gen, right? You know, most of you guys don't have you know 30, 40 people working at the plant anymore, right? It's, unfortunately for you guys, right? It's, it's a skeleton crew and the support and everything else. So, you know, the less contractors you can have on site, the less people you can have to manage, you know, I, I'm certainly, I'm certain it, it makes your job certainly a lot easier. So, you know, this I think helps as well is just providing all of that service in, 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 in one batch and one PO, uh, you know, one neck to ring for you guys as well. Next, uh, you know, let's talk about the deck cord curtain, right? I mean, that's really the, you know, that's really the, sort of play on words, right? That the brunt of the workforce here to get the job done. Um, and, you know, so it's, the, it's engineered and designed in-house here uh, at our company based upon a number of factors. Uh, we size it based on the size of the area, right? The number of faces, the depth of the bundles, the width and height of the two bundle itself inside the HERSIG or the, or the exhaust path. Uh, we also look at the amount of fouling, right? Um, is it, you know, am I looking at a tube that looks like a popsicle stick, right? I've seen it many times or it looks like a popsicle, right? Like you can't even see, you can't even see the tube in the middle anymore. Everything's just packed in, filling all those bundles up and it looks like a popsicle. Uh, all the fin is, all the finning is filled up. Um, and then what is the nature of the fouling, right? Are we dealing with like a white ammonia salting material? Are we dealing with just a lot of delaminated rust of the fins? Um, delaminating of the fins themselves, or are we looking at sulfur buildup, which is a little bit stickier, right? That tends to be your yellow colors. Um, and let's face it, sulfur is becoming a bigger issue for everybody here in the gas turbine space. Um, all the guys burning, burning, burning natural gas are all seeing, you know, a lot more sulfur than they ever saw before. Um, I've seen it on the CO catalyst side with the amount of washes that we do. But the sulfur content in natural gas with the introduction of shale gas has increased greatly over the last five years uh, for all the plants, right? It used to be like the upper Northwest saw a lot of sulfur, maybe a couple plants here and there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's becoming more widespread in the U.S. So those are all the things we look at when we design the debt cord and, and everything else. Next. Next up, yeah, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the detonation cord, right? And this is primarily what's used to do the kinetic energy, right? It's used in the duct between the tube faces. Nothing comes in contact with your tubes themselves. And what is it, right? It's it's a flexible linear explosive with a core of PETN uh, explosive encased in a textile outer jacket. Um, it's a prime accord detonating cord. 
it detonates along its entire length at a velocity of 22,000 feet per second, right? So it's a very fast acting charge. And, and we also custom, we customized the deck cord for the application, right? So we talked about it in the previous slide where we design it based on those factors, but we use anywhere from 18 to 50 grain per foot dead cord. And that's really dictated by the depth of the tubes and the, and the actual contaminant that's on the tubes. What is the fouling material? And that's how we, that's how we customize that. Um, and it's about a 12 to, 18 cur 12 to 18 inch curtain spacing based on the fouling volume of nature, right? So that's the vertical runs of the dead cord. It's 12 to 18 inches apart between the runs depending on all those factors. Next up, you know, it ensures the thorough cleaning without compromising the structural integrity of the tubes, right? I think that's super important. You know, we've been, you know, we've been in the business, you know, Brad and Rod, you know, since the eighties doing explosive de-slagging on boiler tubes, right? Um, I don't know, I don't know of anybody and I've, I've been looking at this for quite a many years that's got more experience or more expertise in explosive de-slagging and working with boiler tubes than these two folks here on the phone, Brad and Rod today. Um, you know, just a wealth of knowledge and uh, you know, everything they've designed and put together is meant to be super efficient without damaging any tubes in any way, shape or form. So next, um, you know, we talked about this too. I think this solves another problem, right? And I'll just kind of reiterate it a little bit you know, tubes do not need to be manipulated. We're not spreading tubes here. We're not putting stress on those welds or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's, and nothing comes in contact with the tubes. Uh, just, an, I think an important point to kind of stress as we look at this. Um, you know, so, you know, we'll take a look at the, uh, sorry, I just gotta, you know, the oscillating air tool I think is is sort of, super important here when you when you kind of look at the whole process um you can go to the next slide steve i think that actually shows some better pictures of it um high pressure high volume i'll get to that go to the next slide i will uh so here i, I want to give everybody kind of a, a, a view of, of what the tooling looks like right um it's basically a oscillating air tool that's automated uh via robots that sits on a track system that goes up through the same sky climber ports of the um uh, as as we ring as we rig the, the detonation cord itself as well, um, so it's completely automated. Once again, no manpower. There's nobody in the space once the unit is rigged, um, and it it can clean both sets of bundles at the same time. If you look at this picture on the left, you can kind of see the air tool working both bundles simultaneously as it's doing the cleaning. And if you look here on the right, this was a mock up we did to do some testing of the of the tool, and it delivers super high pressure, high volume air. Um, you know, Brad and Rod have, have done programmable water systems uh, and all sorts of automated systems over the years. So kind of taking the water automation system and applying it to air uh, is, is super, super, super handy and helpful here. Um, and it's basically, you know, a 1500 CFM diesel compressor mounted on our trailer uh, that delivers the air at about a 300 PSI. Um, so it's a lot of air, a lot of volume. And like I said before, you know, we have found that up to 50% of the waste, you know, is on those horizontal surfaces on those tubes after the detonation. Um, so if you look at this picture on the right, I mean, you can imagine what that unit would look like upon startup if you didn't follow it up with the air cleaning and make sure you removed as much of the waste as you could from the unit prior to, to, to you know, starting back up. Next. You know, here's the results, right? And uh, Steve will get into some case studies here. But on the left, you can see some tubes that were, uh, were really, really fouled. Uh, some ammonia salting in there, a uh, fair amount of sulfur, uh, pretty nasty tube set up. You can see it here, kind of that popsicle effect like I was talking about. And then here's on the right following uh, our application of, uh, of cleaning. Um, so super, super effective. Um, I mean, I really think that the results really speak for themselves and we'll get into some more pictures and some case studies here in a second. Fantastic. Thanks uh, for the intro there, Jeff. Um, yeah, like, like Jeff said, we've got two case studies of recent projects and sometimes the before and after pictures kind of tell it all, but I'll get into some of the uh, nitty gritty with the deliverables, uh, back pressure and megawatt gain, heat transfer, et cetera. Um, the first project is a cogen unit um, out of the Gulf Coast that serves as a steam host 
for a neighboring production facility. Um, there's two units on this site. Uh, one of the units had particular issues with climbing back pressure and uh, in turn climbing stack temperatures uh, due to the suspected fouling um, of those fins. So at full load, the unit was designed to run right at 75 megawatts. Um, the back pressure issue is just getting worse and worse and it forced the plant to derate and operate at 75% load due to, due to the uh, suspected tube fouling. Um, while stack temperature compliance was you know, a growing concern, um, an equal uh, you know, concern for the plant was the fact that they had a contract to support steam um, to their customer. So they needed to fix this problem quickly. Um, so this is what we did for them after gaining access to the unit. Uh, there was dramatic and quick results. Six day night shifts for three total days uh, resulted in back pressure being reduced to achieve a 12% megawatt gain. Uh, and the big number there is, I mean, the equivalent of 12% in this unit, six megawatts, that's huge. Um, the heat transfer improved so much that the stack temperature decreased by 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, also a huge win. Now, you know, the deliverable that most people want to hear is, you know, how many, how much debris did you take out of the unit? Out of this particular unit, we took 10 tons of debris out um, after the shock, air, and vac process um, to not just liberate it from the tubes, but get it out of the unit. Now, an important note that folks typically ask at this point is, was there damage? There's absolutely no damage to the tubes or the HERSIG from the cleaning process here. In the second case, another unit from Texas. So you can see here, that's a you know, nice lollipop picture uh, as Jeff likes to, you know, as Jeff described it before. Um, this one's out of a gas turbine power plant with two seven FAs. Um, in this particular case, the tubes had never been cleaned at this plant. This goes to show that just because you've never had to clean your tubes, you know, a little sulfur or ammonia um, downstream or on those tubes can cause a problem quickly and, um, you know, salt up those tubes. On unit one, uh, the plant was seeing nine inches of back pressure across the module, uh, while on unit two, they were showing seven inches. So one worse than the other, but both in uh, you know pretty bad shape. Similar to our previous case, all those fins you know blocked up not only caused back pressure issues, but also um, heat transfer and stack temperature concerns. Um, while we were on site, we set up debt cord curtains um, as we normally would, but in this particular case, there's actually another contractor in the unit at the same time we were setting the deck cord curtains up, they were doing some other work. So we're able to um, really use the plant's outage time efficiently and kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, each unit here required three days as well. Um, so six days total to thorough, thoroughly clean both units. Um, fantastic results in both. We saw four inches of back pressure improvement in both units, uh, one megawatt of gain per unit, and uh, the heat rate was improved by 1% across the board, resulting in better uh, you know, stack temperatures as well. In all, we took about 10 tons of debris between the units, so five tons of debris uh, between them. So another huge win here outside of you know, the, the quantitative results is not only did we not uh, you know, there's no damage at all to the tu tubes in the HERSIG again, but the cleaning method actually revealed incomplete welds that had been covered with the phalant and gone undetected. So we were able to save um, a lot of heartburn at the plant uh, for work down the road. And with that, uh, that's our presentation. We're going to open it up for q and I I do see a good amount of uh, questions Already. Yeah, Steve, I've got uh, I've got both the chat and the Q and A here opened up, so I will uh, I'll kind of go through go through here and answer a couple of questions, and uh, if, if I need uh, 
if I need some assistance on any of them, I'll, I'll hand them off to some other folks. Uh, so I'll start with the chat here and then we'll go over to the, uh, to the Q and A. Um, so we've got first here on the chat, we've got Travis Legrand is asking, uh, you don't require scaffolding, but if there's scaffolding in the heater for inspection, repair, et cetera, will it interfere with your work? Um, if it's in the exact confined space that we need to in, in and around that two bundle, uh, we, you know, we can't have any scaffolding in there. Um, so, you know, but if it's in like another section of the confined space, it doesn't interfere with our, our you know, kinetic energy itself, then it should be just fine. Uh, ah, Lee, uh, hope, hope Lee's doing well. Um, have sky climber ports ever been needed to be added or existing ports enough? If you've got existing ports within that section of the HRSG, um, they should be enough. Uh, we can kind of engineer our system and rig it however we need to based on what you've already got in there. Uh, so in most cases, we should be just fine there, Lee. Um, is the cleaning process cost effective on a small scale fin tubes on package boilers or economizers? Yeah, I mean, these guys have been doing deslagging operations for many, many years. I don't, I don't think it, the scale of it itself does not really make a difference there. Um, has this technology been used on convection section tubes, on canned or box style refinery heaters when the tubes are in the horizontal orientation? I'm going to let Rod field that one. Rod, do you? Uh, so what? Uh, what Carrie's asking here is, have you guys ever used it on convection section? Uh, like a box style heater when the tubes are in the horizontal orientation? Yeah, uh, the, that's not an issue. The uh, thing that we need to be uh, privy to are drawings of the uh, boilers in the convection center sections and what access we have to those sections. You know, uh, when put when placing deck cord, uh, you oftentimes have you have to put personnel in there to place the deck cord, then remove the personnel for the detonation of such debt cords. So yeah, it would work in, in those applications with no problem. Fantastic. Um, any issue with hard impacted slags such as sintered catalysts and like waste heat boilers or calciner incinerators? You guys probably, Brad, maybe you, Brad and Rod, maybe you guys have got some experience on the, on the de-slagging side with what that slag is like. Um, address that Brad I was going to say we have yet to come in and come into contact with any material that the explosive is, has not been effective on okay perfect if I might add something what I what we found is that the harder or the more brittle the material is the more it will react to the kinetic shock wave in other words if the harder it is the better it will fracture does that gotcha. make sense? Yep. Fantastic. Uh, next up, what is the cost of this cleaning in comparison to kind of traditional cleaning methods like dry ice blasting? I would say cost effective wise, it's, it's super cost effective. I and mean, we're going to deliver a much bigger ROI than you'd ever get out of dry ice blasting. Um, and, you know, we can take you through those numbers. Uh, so, you know, Clay, feel free to reach out to one of us or, uh, or, or one of the reps that, uh, that, that you're in contact with. Um, so is there any risk of damaging fins uh, if they have experienced thinning of the metal? Um, we haven't damaged any fins yet, right? Like we're gonna remove the, you know, you have the delamination of the fins, which is really normal, but what's gonna be left is what the good steel is, right? So Travis, I would tell you like, you know, the good steel is going to be left. How much of that is left is really dependent upon your unit, right? I, I can't, uh, I can't speak to how much of that, that fin that's left is rust and how much is actual good steel. Um, so the average DP savings across a HRSIG unit, uh, David, is probably somewhere between four to six inches is the average. Uh, depends on how often it's been cleaned, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how do we protect burners and instrumentation stride the heater from falling debris? Uh, most of those, uh, most of those instrumentation is pretty low inside the HERSIG and we can cover all that stuff. Uh, we've also got another question over here with regards to SCR catalyst. Uh, we hang a, we hang a, um, we hang a, uh, like a real heavy sort of tarp insulator that uh, protects the SCR catalyst from the detonation cord itself. So we isolate that SCR um, from the actual use of the debt cord. Uh, 
so that's how we protect the SCR. You, you guys know I'm sort of an SCR expert here, so I wouldn't be doing anything that would sort of compromise your SCR in any way, shape, or form. Um, so yeah, we protect that instrumentation and all that kind of stuff inside the unit. Um, next up, can this process be used in horizontal tubes? I think we covered that on that previous question here. Uh, you know, it's really more about the access to those horizontal tubes, but horizontal tube configurations do not really cause us any sort of major heartburn or issues with trying to get them to work. Um, large dense fin fan horizontal heat exchanger. I, I think we sort of covered that as well, another horizontal application. Um, thermal oxidizers, uh, heat recovery units, boiler combustion preheaters. Uh, yeah, it'll work for that as well. Uh, I know that for a fact. Uh, what experience do you have with this process, cleaning horizontally mounted boiler economy, two bundles or fin fans in the oil refinery? I think we covered that pretty thoroughly here. Um, I know Rod was just out on one of those jobs a couple of weeks ago, taking a look at some of that stuff for a refinery there in uh, in Pasadena. Um, is there any risk of damaging the SCR blocks, Keith? I think we covered that, right? We, we hang an insulator that uh, effectively keeps the uh, kinetic energy from affecting your SCR catalyst. Um, what is, once again, Keith, you know, another good question here, when air cleaning, what is the potential for fouling the catalyst with dust? You know, we protect that SCR catalyst, so it's not a huge issue at all. Um, have, has this been done in ethylene furnaces? Uh, Rod, you've got the most, uh, refinery experience down there. We have not done this yet in ethylene furnace, have we not? No, we have not. Yep. We have not, but we would welcome the opportunity. Um, horizontal convection sections. Do we have a video of a detonation that we could see? We do have a video on the website if you want to take a look at it. Um, video of a detonation itself. Uh, we can probably get you one, Gary. If you reach out to us, we can send you something over. Um, here's Jeremy. Uh, in a convection coil cleaning, is there, if there is multiple coils in various configurations, do you place a single charge at the start of the convection section? or charge at the inlet of each coil? Uh, would this process impact an SCR? I think we covered the SCR side, um, but we would actually string a charge at the inlet and the exit of each coil um, is the best way that we like to handle that. Um, having used, sorry, we got a lot of questions and I, I, I still see more coming up over here on the chat, so. Um, Having used both dry ice and shockwave in the past, one of the main disappointments was the cleaning of the middle rows where two bundles are six to 10 rows deep. What are the results after the cleaning in the inner rows using this style of cleaning? Uh, we found that we don't really see a deterioration in rows six to 10. Uh, the kinetic energy, the way the cord is set in between the tubes, you know, cause we kind of, when we hang that cord, we, you can see it in the video, we hang it where sort of the fittings come together and where those alleyways are. Uh, and we've seen uh, really, really good results. You know, I think that's really kind of coming back to, this is a, to me, a really good question, right? Because when you're looking at the different blasting technologies out there, you know, they all are sort of limited to how they deliver that, that shockwave, right? They deliver it in, you know, a shroud or they deliver it via, you know, one section at a time. Maybe it's, you know, two foot by two foot explosion, right? What we're doing is we're setting up the deck cord in a linear fashion, the way it runs with your tubes, the way those alleyways are positioned. And it really allows us to be super, super effective. Yeah, um, if, I might, if I might add yeah, something to ahead, this. Uh, if you're looking at a bank, realize we can set a curtain on the inlet side and the exit side of that bank. Let's say your bank is nine tubes deep. So on the inlet side, when that kinetic shock wave is released, it's released 360 degrees. So it's going to penetrate, let's say it penetrates four tubes deep. Then we can jump the charge over to the, ex to the exit side of the bank, detonate that curtain, and it, it will also release the kinetic shock wave 360 degrees, and it's gonna clean four and a half to five tubes in. So you get a complete clean on that bank because you're gonna attack it from both directions. Does that yep. help, Jeff? Yeah, certainly does. Okay, um, let me see if I can see where I picked up. 
Can this process be done while the CT is open, i.e. during a major? So we would probably want to go in there and have some sort of curtain erected at the exit of your combustion turbine prior to setting off any explosives. You know, the explosive itself is not necessarily where all the dust comes from, right? I mean, it's a little bit dusty, but the real dusting comes in when we start to do the air cleaning, right? And it just creates a... Uh, so we'd want to make sure we have that CT pretty well, uh, pretty well covered on the on the exit side there. Uh, are the dead cords able to be reused or kept in place? Uh, they are not. Once you once you light off a dead cord, that 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 dead cord is is gone. It actually disintegrates into midair. Uh, there's really no waste from the dead cord itself, uh, so you can't really leave them in place, and they can't be reused. Uh, how deep of a bundle can kinetic clean system penetrate? Uh, Steve's asking. Uh, Steve, that's a good question. Uh, we've tested this up to about 18 to 20 inches deep, uh, 20 tubes deep, and it seems to be very, very effective. You know, that's where the different grains of debt cord really come into play because we can step up that grainage and, and, and increase that charge until we get the penetration that we're looking for there, Steve. Um, I think that's the other thing that really makes this super effective, right? It's not you know, we're able to, to set a couple charges, go in, do an inspection, take a look at how deep we got, and then reset again and reset again. And we can keep stepping up the different grains of dead cord that we use until we get that bundle as clean as everybody's looking for. All right. I think that that is all of the questions. I hope I answered everybody's question. I hope I got to all of them. Um, I tried to. If I didn't, please here is my here's my email address here's my cell phone number you know you guys are more than welcome to reach out to me or steve directly um we've also got brad and rob's information we'll pass on along as well um you know if you've got any questions feel free to reach out to us i i can't thank everybody enough for their time i know we've gone over by a couple minutes here i'm sorry but thanks everybody for hopping on this webinar and uh you know, we uh, we look forward to your inquiries and 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 the opportunities that that you guys allow us to come over there and 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 provide some services at your plants. So thanks everybody. I hope everybody has a safe rest of their outage season here and turnaround season, and uh, and happy holidays here. Is uh, I think after the last year and a half that we've all gone through are, are sort of really well deserved. So thanks everybody. Hope you have a great day.